Good morning. I want to welcome you as we gather together this day to worship God and to uh, be the family of God as we come together. A couple of announcements uh, as we're getting started. If you're sitting on the end of the pew, if you would please uh, find the fellowship pad that's near you. We'd like everyone to sign it, pass it down the road, and send it back. We ask you to send it back for a couple of reasons. Maybe there's someone sitting near you that doesn't know you, and so this way everybody gets to look at it after everyone is signed. Second, we're Presbyterian and we're creatures of habit, so after worship, we got people who walk this aisle and they're going to pick it up, and uh, so you know, we don't want to confuse them, so if you would. But I do want you to take time to look at it and see who's sitting with you, particularly if you don't know them. Following worship, spend a minute or two getting to know them and extend a hand of fellowship. Uh, if you, uh, again, I, uh, I promise I won't keep making these. I think I've said that before, so, so far it's not true. But if you're on social media, you know, we do live stream our service on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. So we encourage you to share that with others. Uh, we also encourage you during the week to be inviting folks to come and worship uh, with you. Um, we do. We are still searching for some folks to work with the live stream. We'll, uh, Jonathan will be happy to talk with you, answer any questions you may have. He'll train you in everything you need to know, so you can please let him know. If, you, if you're either interested in doing it, doing it or at least interested in learning some more information about it, that would be great. We've been encouraging you for the last month, uh, pointing to today. If you haven't already brought your pledge card in, uh, if you brought it today, you can place it in the offering plate as it comes by. Uh, if you forgot it again, you know, we just encourage you to get those in as soon as we can. We're trying to get the budget put together, and that's important information. Uh, shortly in the service, we'll be taking up uh, the sensibility offering. We do this at the last Sunday of the month. This used to be the two cents a meal. It's now sensibility. You can do. We're encouraging you to do at least a nickel a meal uh, every time you sit down to eat, and then we take that up once a month, and it goes to fight hunger and poverty here locally, but elsewhere too, and it joins with other churches doing that. I will remind you about Wednesday together Bible study on Wednesday nights at six o'clock. Next Saturday, the youth are going to Ocean Isle for Bethlehem Live. Do you know how many spots we have left? Okay, so they're going to be here at the church at 6. If you're interested in going, there are 12 spots that you can get. Uh, just call the office or get up with Aaron and be happy to, to do that. Next Sunday is uh, the beginning of Advent. And uh, the other thing is we'll have our caroling and hot dogs. We'd like to try to get an idea who will be participating in that. Two couple of ways you can let us know. When the fellowship pad comes around, uh, just put out beside your name, uh, Carolyn and Hot Dogs or something to indicate so we know you're going to be here. Or you can call the office or you can call Debbie V. And uh, just would, uh, I will say this, so if you forget to do either of those, come anyway. All right? I don't need a hot dog, so uh, you can have mine and uh, we'll share uh, and whatnot. The other thing uh, is in your bulletin you'll see an, an insert uh, for the 2017 Advent season. Um, I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. Take it home and write down. These are all of the activities that are going on here at the church. Uh, so write these on your calendar. We encourage you to come. But this is also a good tool that you can take and hand to your neighbors or your friends and invite them to come to any of these things as well. Uh, so please hang on to those. All right. You ready? Martin's got an announcement. with what Catherine's putting on with regard to the Vineland Christmas. She'll be down at Vineland Station. I've got some tickets with me now. By all means, I'm glad to get you more. Don't worry. Buy them in advance. Buy them often. Buy as many as you will. It's a fundraiser for the Scouts. It helps the campus ships for those who want to go to summer camp. And I know you may know about the Belmont on our second morning this year, so we'll be doing it in 2018. And so we need as, as much as possible to get these kids camping and get them enjoying it. We're up to about 40 Scouts now. We've got a very large group. So anything that you can do, if you don't eat chicken bob, that's fine. Buy it for a friend, buy it for a neighbor, but please come support 512 and also come downtown and support all the merchants there as well. Thank you all. Any other announcements? Then I'll get to prayer concerns. So, 
Uh, so any men, if you can hang around, just a little, won't take too long, I don't think. And I uh, just got to move a few things. Could use uh, a little bit of help with that. Prayer concerns. Uh, a couple of that I would add. Uh, one, certainly keep Egypt uh, after the terror attack yesterday, keep them in your, or the other day, keep them in your prayers. Also, David Trogdon. David is coming along with his eye. Um, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, a week and a half ago, I can't remember, a little over a week ago, uh, he passed out. Uh, there may be a little bit more to that, so he's got some doctor's appointments. I'll be going this week, so hopefully we'll know more. But keep uh, David and his wife, Boogie, in your prayers as they're going through this time, uh, get some medical tests and trying to get answers and where all that's going to be leading and what it will mean. Other prayer concerns that aren't listed? I want to invite you to join me and let's call one another to this time of worship using our responsive call to worship in your bulletin. Come, let us worship the King. Give praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus was our promised Messiah. God with us in every way. And all who know Christ know also the very heart of Almighty God. God was in Christ redeeming us, and calling us to receive eternity. Let us celebrate the fullness of God in Christ, our blessed Savior. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I invite everyone who's able, let's stand together for our opening hymn. It's 263, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
It is in obedience to these words that we calm and we baptize those who Christ has called. So we gather around the baptismal font this morning to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the baptism of River Langdon Scott. So may we remember again that baptism is the means by which all of us enter the church. May we remember that baptism is not a magic moment or forgiveness, but it points us to the grace of God that we see in Jesus Christ. And it also points us forward to the promised return of our Savior. Let us remember that as Presbyterians, we baptize infant children with the belief and the faith that God's act of grace and salvation is at work in us even before we can claim it for ourselves. So, Ethan and Catherine, do you desire that River be baptized today? If so, please say we do. So as we celebrate River's baptism, I again want to invite you to reflect on the promises and the vows that his parents will be making today. And take this as an opportunity to renew your own commitment, your own faith, your own baptism. All right, so do you claim God's covenant promise on River's behalf? And do you look in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ for his salvation as you do for your own? If so, say, we do. Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to River? If so, please say, we do. Oh, there we go. Bless you. You got another one? Okay. Now, do you promise to pray with River and pray for River and to bring him up in the knowledge and the love of God? If so, say we do. Guide and pray for River, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of Christ's church. If so, please say, we do. Let us pray. Holy God, send your spirit to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Rinse them to new life and graft them in the body of Christ. Pour out our Holy Spirit upon them that they may have power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise, honor, and glory now and forever. Amen. All right, River. How are you, buddy? All right, Mr. River Langdon Scott, you, my friends, are a child of the covenant. And I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That wasn't so bad, now, was it? So you want to come see your family a little bit? You're going to stare at your daddy, aren't you? <laughs> Let me tell you, these folks right here have promised to pray with you, to support you, and your folks. So when they give you a hard time, I'll be in my own, they're going to be on your side. <laughs> you can come tell on them. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, we do celebrate the baptism of River this day, and we welcome him into the community of faith. 
We ask that you will guide Ethan and Catherine in their own walks of faith as they strive to be loving, caring, and diligent parents to River. And guide us as a church family as we are called to be witnesses to Christ in word and deed and nurture all of your children in the faith. Guide us always as we seek to live as a baptized people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, so here's the baptism certificate and a copy of the service. And we also want to give you uh, it's a little, uh, little tie, linen towel with his name, uh, birth date, and date of baptism. Celebrating the gift, the sacrament of baptism. We're called to reflect on our own lives, our, our shortcomings in God's grace. So I want to invite you to let's join our voices together. Because when we're in the presence of God, we realize how far short we all fall. So let us join our voices together and lift our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Almighty God. What a heritage we have in you. You have granted us salvation and protection. And have loved us despite our betrayal in the heritage. And we have failed to appreciate our legacy. We do not know the stories well, nor do we tell them with much wonder. We forsake you as we forget your glorious works on our behalf our dependence upon you, and our responsibility to the covenant we share. Forgive us, O oh God, and remind us what you have done, that we might neither grieve nor despair, but find hope in your promises and resolve to serve you, our Lord. We lift this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who truly is King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Lord, hear my prayer. We worship a God who gives as the world cannot give. Let us accept the gifts of grace and forgiveness that clear our guilt and renew us. Glory to God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together. Most holy, gracious God, what a day it is to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ, to come from various backgrounds, neighborhoods, communities, and with different hopes and dreams, but we come as one people. We come as one people united in our faith in you. And for that, Lord, we give you thanks. We thank you for your grace in Jesus Christ, that gift that comes from you. That through him we are all renewed and forgiven and promised the gift of eternal life. Lord, that's the message. That's the good news, the gospel message. And you've entrusted that to us. So we ask that you would empower us to carry that into all the world. Right here in Whiteville in Columbus County, but even further than that. May we be faithful in our witness. And Lord, as we gather, we are mindful of 
the struggles and the crisis through the world. We are reminded again of terror attacks and the, the threat that they bring and the pain and the suffering. We lift up Egypt and others going through uh, a time following an attack and just pray for your, your peace and comfort to be upon them. We lift up Christians throughout the world, Lord, who many of whom gather with great risk to their own life and safety. Just pray that you would, in, you would enable all of us to have such faith and such courage as to stand up for who we are in you. We lift up those who grieve the death of a loved one, that there's never a good time in coming out of the uh, Thanksgiving holidays for those uh, who have passed away this week, uh, those who are grieving, Lord, we ask for your grace to give them comfort and that sense of hope uh, that there's a new day coming where we'll all be gathered together again in your presence. We pray for those who are sick, and we ask for your healing hand to be upon them, to renew them, to strengthen them, and to make them whole once again, physically and spiritually and emotionally and in all ways. Lord, we are thankful for those who serve our country and our community, whether they're in the military or firefighters, or law enforcement, paramedics. We thank you for their sacrifices and their commitment and the risk that they face, and we ask that you would continue to watch over them. Lord, we ask that you would hear not only this prayer, but hear the prayers of our hearts and our souls that we lift in silence. But hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, I'm going to invite the, some of the members of the junior Sunday school class. Y'all can come on down. They're going to come down, and they've got their baskets, and we'll be uh, passing those to take up our sensibility offer. As we've gathered together, brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to invite you to take just a moment. We're going to shorten it a little bit today. We've got a lot going on, and I've got a full sermon that we're going to do. Uh, but let's greet one another in the name of Christ, and if the kids will go ahead and make their way forward uh, for the children's sermon. Good job, good job. <laughs> he did great. He takes after you. Good to see you again. How are you? Good. You been here all weekend? Uh, through on Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah, good. I wondered if you or your sister would be here. Yeah, she had to work, and her in-laws, future in-laws are going to be in that. Yeah, day. yeah. Hey, Steve. Good.
sometimes I see where you have spirit week and you can wear hats or something. But anyway, so we're going to talk about different hats. So Leighton, hand me my first hat, any of them. Okay. What kind of hat is this? It is a football hat. That's right, a football helmet. So who wears this? I definitely do not wear it. Right, Leighton wears it. A football player, okay? Leighton, my next one. Okay, what kind of helmet is this? Hat. Baseball. And who wears this? A baseball player. That's right. Okay, Leighton. Who wears this? A cowboy. A cowboy. Or a what? A right. It's the cow. That's a cowgirl hat, isn't it? Yes. I think I look good in that. It's a cowgirl hat. All right. <gasps> this. Crown. It's a crown. Yeah. Well, who? Who wears this? Elsa. Elsa wears this, yes. A princess wears that. What kind of hat is this? A North State hat. <laughs> Who wears a hat like this? Coke? A hunter. A hunter wears a hat like this. Ah, who wears a hat like this? A king. This one is a, right. Well, so a king, I think this one's a king's hat. It's a crown. So, so who wears a crown? Right. So today we are going to, oh, so this is a king's hat then for sure. So the lesson today is about a king who was born many years ago. But this king was different than most kings. He didn't live in a palace. He didn't wear a beautiful robe. And he certainly didn't wear a crown that looked like that one with jewels. And he didn't have soldiers to fight his battles. So who was this king? Jesus. But do you know what Jesus, what kind of king Jesus was? He was the king of everything, the king of kings. That's pretty impressive, right? He wasn't just the king of America or the king of Great Britain. He is the king of all kings. And his kingdom is not here on earth. Where's his kingdom? In heaven. But Jesus did finally wear a crown, and honestly, I was counting on the crown being on the table today. <laughs> Nobody told me it was going to be there. But what kind of crown did Jesus wear? A prickly one, yes. It was a crown of thorns. It was not made of gold, not of jewels, of thorns. Do you think that felt very good? So even though he didn't look like what a king looks like, because you know a king is going to wear a long, beautiful robe and a beautiful a beautiful crown, he's going to tell everybody what to do and be bossy and have soldiers fight for him. He doesn't look like everybody else, right? So our king, Jesus the king, Christ the king, the king of kings, he looked like we did. But he's more powerful than any other king, and he did wear a crown. So today, I want you to know that in everything that we do, we need to follow our King, which is Jesus. Can you pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for Christ the King and for the crown of thorns that he wore. Amen.
I'm going to invite you to turn with me. Our scripture lesson today comes from the first chapter of Revelation. We're going to be reading verses 4b through 8. 4b, uh, if you ever see scripture with a A, B, C, uh, it's uh, uh, the clause. So it's the second phrase, second clause of uh, the fourth verse is where we'll start. As you turn in your Bible or on your phone or whatever, wherever, uh, let's come before God for a word of prayer. Loving and gracious God, we come once again to hear you speak. As we gather for worship, you speak through our neighbors and our friends. You speak through the songs we've seen, the liturgy that we carry on. But we ask now that you would speak through your word, your holy word. Pour your spirit upon it that it might challenge us and strengthen us. That it might help us to live more faithfully to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So this is Revelation 1, 4b through 8. Let us listen to the word of God. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. So today, in the liturgical calendar, it is Christ the King Sunday. Christ the King Sunday is actually the last Sunday of the liturgical year. Next week, we begin a new liturgical year as we enter the season of Advent. Now, a lot growing up, and y'all may be similar, one of the traditions we had at our house was we'd have a big Thanksgiving. My grandparents and all my aunts and uncles on my mom's side, they would come to our house and we'd have Thanksgiving there. Well, they would all get up and leave Saturday morning which wasn't a bad thing. When you've got 25 people in the house, we love them dearly, but those taillights look really good. Once they left, the tradition we had in my house growing up was we would put up and decorate our Christmas tree the Saturday after Thanksgiving. We often do that. We often do that. We just weren't ready this year. Um... But we often, that's something a lot of folks do. The Saturday after Thanksgiving or the weekend after Thanksgiving, put up your Christmas tree. And that's not a bad thing. Now, this year, we're not in Christmas season or Advent season. That begins next week. Christ the King Sunday ends the year. And we can see Advent, and it moves us there. But the reason we have Christ the King Sunday is before we go and turn our attention to the birth of this baby in a manger, we want to celebrate who he will be. And that is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So as we move into Advent next week, we're going to remember this day because as, even as we anticipate his birth and his return, we know that he is king. Now, about a month ago, I told you a story. It happened in 2010. My family and I were visiting our partner church in Morelia in Guatemala. And I told you how we met, the, y'all remember the story of the little lady, the widow with the two copper coins, and as everybody was putting in their large sums, she came and dropped those in. Okay, we met that lady. The other thing I told you is that that was my second trip to Guatemala, that the year before I had gone to Guatemala, and on the last day, I was robbed at gunpoint. And then I told you I would tell you that story another day. Today is another day. And I want to share some from that trip because it's an important time in my life, in my faith life. I was in Guatemala in 2009, really for two purposes. It was a Presbyterian trip. 
And Ban in Banrail, we had a partner church, Arca de Noe in Morelia, this little village. Um, and then we were also, before we went to visit our partner churches, we gathered at a seminary. And uh, the Guatemalan pastors who were part of the partnership program, they came and we had a conference celebrating the 500th birthday of John Calvin. It was a beautiful experience because I got to see the kingdom of God in a fuller way. I was raised in the South, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, South Carolina. And anything that wasn't a Southern accent was different. But when you travel in another country, you really experience what's different. And so to go to Guatemala and to worship and to study with other Christians, you see the full image of the kingdom of God. So while we were there for 10 days, we spent about three or four days with our partner churches. Now, our partner church in Morelia, they worship seven days a week. Six days, they were at people's houses, elders' houses. So each night, they were at a different elder's house. And then on Sundays, they would gather in the sanctuary to worship. So I had the opportunity to worship with them several times. It's probably like this in other countries as well. But when you worship with a church in Guatemala, it's loud in a good way. So you have gathered together, young and old, singing out hymns. They don't care if they can sing. They're there to worship God. They sing like they mean it. They take it seriously, make a joyful noise, okay? It was beautiful. It's not in tune, but it was beautiful. You have, when you get time to read the scripture, everybody opens their Bible and reads along. And I remember sitting there that first night, and there was a... These children behind me, probably about eight or nine maybe, and they read so loud. Everybody just, they're so excited to be there in worship. It's a beautiful image of the kingdom of God. But as beautiful as their worship was, the image of Christ's kingdom was not found in their times of worship. It was found in the tears of the women when they would come up and hug you and say how thankful they were for the partnership. It was in the smiles of the children as they played with. And it was then, one of the things we would do when we go, we had a scholarship program because in, in Guatemala, uh, public schools only went to, I don't know, like third or fourth grade, and then you had to pay to go to school. So we had a scholarship program to enable kids to go to school, and so the year, whenever we would go, they had kind of the graduation Sunday, so they'd line them all up from one side of the sanctuary to the other, those who were being promoted to another grade that we sponsored. And you see on their face their excitement to have the opportunity to learn and that we were there to be a part of it. There was the image of the God, of God and, and the, in the uh, Christ as king and being in his kingdom. I asked them, what does it mean for them to be in a partnership with us? And I think it was really interesting. The significance was way beyond whatever financial contributions we have. For them, the most exciting thing about that partnership was it reminded them that they were part of the family of God. Because here they were, this little bitty village in a country that no one was paying much attention to. No one cared about the church in Morelia. But we were there, and we made real for them that they were part of the body of Christ. So despite language differences, despite custom differences, despite the distance that separated us, we were one church. We were brothers and sisters in Christ. We were a family. And they took us in and welcomed us as family. Our text today from the book of Revelation proclaims that Jesus is the ruler of kings of the earth and the one who loves us and freed us from our sins. That means that the earth belongs to him, that his authority reigns over all people. You see, his love is not reserved for a particular denomination. It's not reserved for a particular country. It's not reserved for a particular uh, class of people. It's not reserved for those who speak a certain language. It is his authority is over all the earth. 
And that's the good news of Jesus Christ. That is the message that this day, Christ the King Sunday proclaims. And that's the message that even as we leave here and we go about the rest of our lives and we get in headed towards Christmas and all of that, we need to keep the message of the kingship of Christ echoing from our mouth. It was a beautiful trip, I will say. I'd never been out of the country. It was a beautiful trip. So when we finished up visiting our partner church, we went back, had one night at the um, seminary where we kind of debriefed because there was groups, various churches, and they have different partners, so we all came back together. Then we headed into Guatemala City. That was on a Tuesday. We were to leave at 1.50 on Wednesday was when our plane was to fly out. So I wake up, and I'm still just walking on cloud nine because it's been such a beautiful experience to see uh, the, the, the body of Christ in, a, in its larger context. So that morning, we had plenty of time. We ate breakfast, and a group of us decided to walk to the Artisan's Market, which probably was about a 15, 20-minute walk. wasn't too far. So we did the things you do. We went and we spent the rest of our money. It's what we were trying to do because we, uh, you know, you, you got to bring back souvenirs. And, oh, man, they had these wheels of chocolate. Oh, I was so excited. Finally brought, bought my mother-in-law something because I think I'd had gifts for everybody but her. So I got that taken care of. And then we began walking back. Now, there was about 22 of us in this group. I was in front. Why? I have no idea. I'd never been to Guatemala. I had no idea where I was going. I just know somebody behind me was going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Turn here or whatever. 10.30 in the morning, a car stops. Two men with guns get out. They point the guns at me, and they made me an offer. They said, give us everything or you die. Now, I'm just a little southern boy, but that seemed like a pretty good deal. I took it. So I handed them my bag with all of that chocolate, all of that in there. But also I had a fanny pack on, and they took that. Now, where was that? In my fanny pack was my cell phone for when I got home, because I was packed ready to go. I had my cell phone so I could let Angel know when we landed in Atlanta. I had my car keys. I had um, my camera. I had my wallet, and I had my passport. So the car drives away, and I'm going, here goes my passport. But there was honor among thieves, at least, because they held up their end of the bargain, right? I traded. We, it, everything worked well. But I'm going, but there goes my passport. And all of my identification. So we started walking back to the hotel. Everybody else had ducked behind a sign, by the way. Um, I was the only one that got robbed. Uh, so it was quite, it was interesting. So we make our way back to the hotel. On the way, we find some police officers, but they were not too concerned with me. They had been involved in a car wreck, and they were more concerned with their fender bender than some tourists from the United States. We get back to the hotel. Several things begin to happen. We're about two blocks from the airport. Back at the hotel, the group I traveled with gathered around me, laid their hands on me, and began to pray. And after their prayer, the owner of the hotel drove them to the airport. Actually, they walked. He followed. We were going to walk, but after that, he wouldn't let them go by themselves. But they wouldn't get in the car, so he followed them. So they're on their way to the airport. Um, before they left, they emptied their pockets, gave me all of the Guatemalan money that we had left between us. They gave me the group cell phone that worked in Guatemala, so that was good. Um, we had some in the group that weren't there with us. They were staying another few days at another conference, and we let them know, and the, the pastor, the Guatemalan pastors there prayed for like 10 minutes for me and the situation. I called Angela and explained what was going on and said, I probably won't be home today. You know, uh, 
She immediately called the church and texted friends and got them praying. Someone called Presbytery office. We had churches throughout Western North Carolina praying. And I remember because I had to wait for the owner of the hotel to get back from following the group to the airport. And I'm sitting on the stair of the hotel, kind of like this. And there's this young girl, probably in her 20s, who works there, sitting by me with her hand patting me on the back, saying something really good. But it was in Spanish. And I still have no idea what she was saying. Other than God is good. But there was this difference. I couldn't make out every word she said, but I know she was comforting me with the love of God. The owner gets back. If you've ever been to Guatemala, driving on a good day will move you to prayer. So I get in the car with the owner. He's going to take me to the embassy because they close at 12, and it's like 11, 11, 15. We jump curbs, we ran red lights. I, my job is to pray. I'm also asking him, now, if I can't get out, do you have rooms in the hotel? Because I don't want to be homeless and without a passport and without money. He's like, don't worry about it. We get to the embassy. There's a line wrapping around the embassy. But I'm an American citizen, so I do get in. I go up. You know what you got to have to have a passport? Two things. You got to have a photo. So they said, well, sir, you got to go around the corner and get a photo. So I had to go back out, go get my photo, come back in. Luckily, one of the things they made us do was make copies of our um, passport before we went. So I had that. That was the only identification I had. They closed at 12. At about 12.20, they hand me my passport. I get back in the car, taking my life in my own hands, or no, not mine, but the guy who owns the hotel. He drives to the airport. We get there. Delta folks fill out my paperwork. I make it to the gate in time to buy water and a Snickers bar, and I fly out with my group. There really is no reason I should have made it out that day, logically speaking. The, the, the numbers just don't work. but it gave me another image of the kingdom of God. Earlier I had received a vision of God as a very big God who reigns in Jesus Christ uh, and that it extends to the whole world, that he draws us in despite our differences. We can worship. And through this experience of being held up at gunpoint and having my life threatened, I got to see a vision of God as also being up close and personal. Again, I shouldn't have made it out that day, but we serve a mighty God. 90 minutes after being robbed, 25 minutes after turning in uh, my, my application, I had it in hand. But what it reminded me of is that Christ is king. There's no doubt about that. His reign is sure and certain. There's no doubt about that. But it's not yet complete. There's evil in the world. We live in a fallen world and there's evil. There's evil in the world that wants us to forget the image of Christ's kingdom that I had experienced earlier with the ladies hugging me and the children smiling and us all singing. There's evil in the world that only wants us to see terror, fear, and chaos. But Christ is king. God is bigger than all of that. And I'm reminded that our work of proclaiming the good news of God's saving grace in Jesus Christ is not complete either. Even as we celebrate the reign of Christ and begin looking forward to Advent and Christmas, we must continue to share our faith through words and through the way that we live so that fear and terror, frustration and uncertainty are not allowed to overcome ourselves or others. We must continue to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and his reign over the earth. We must continue to baptize in the sure and certain hope that in life and in death, we belong to the one true God. And we must continue to live our life of faith boldly, no matter what. So we board the airplane. Sitting next to me was Richard Boyce. Now, at the time, Richard Boyce was associate professor of preaching and pastoral leadership at the Charlotte campus of the uh, um, Union Presbyterian Seminary. Now he is um, academic dean. 
He was one of the speakers at the Calvin Conference. As the plane pushes back from the gate and as we take off, all of the emotions now begin to hit me. My adrenaline begins to subside and the reality of it all hits. And we're sitting there and he leans over to me. And he shares with me a quote from John Calvin. And so I want to paraphrase it for you because I think this quote captures the essence of of what it means to be a Christian, of what it means to profess that Jesus is Lord, that he's king. John Calvin said this, I pray that you had this never-failing assurance that when the world appears to be aimlessly tumbled about, the Lord is everywhere at work. Have this assurance that when the world seems aimlessly tumbled about. The Lord is everywhere at work. Reminded of that, we can rejoice because we live and move in a world where Christ is king. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we are thankful for your reign in this world and in our lives. Never, May we never allow the circumstances and events of this world, this fallen world, cloud or blind us to your presence, to your sure and certain reign, even as we await its completion. But enable us to live faithfully in all that we say and all that we do. In Christ's name, amen. I do want us to sing a hymn of response. Uh, it's Lead On, O King Eternal, it's hymn 269, so let us stand together and sing.
precious Lord, we come before you with all that we are. We come with our tithes, our offering. We come, Lord, with our pledges of our, not only of our finances, but of our lives. Receive these things. Lord, help us to join who we are, what we have with one another, that we can do great things in your name, that we can share the good news of Jesus Christ. We can share your kingdom and we can make a difference here in our community and beyond. For Lord, we offer all of these things to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is 268, Crown Him with Many Crowns. With the constant and sure assurance that we live and move and have our being in the kingdom of Christ. And that when the world seems chaotic, when things seem to be spinning out of control, know that God is very much at work and present. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.